not in the time of storytelling. Uh, we are in the time of power. After today and this month, you will not walk empty anymore. God will make you a container of power. This is not the time to murmur. It's not the time to cry. It's not the time to give up. It's the time to pray some more. There is a day when the books will be visited. On the last day, what will help you enter heaven is what is written on the book. You think nobody is seeing you. You are wasting time. I came to tell you the God we serve is a God of restoration. The God we serve is a mighty God. You don't serve a dead God. You serve a mighty God. God is on your side. Power on your side. Glory is on your side. Look your way. Shut it. say for many are the afflictions of the righteous but they are God delivered them from them all lift your two hands to heaven and tell him Lord deliver me Lord deliver me, deliver me. just open your mouth and turn that word to praise and the Lord deliver me Lord deliver me Lord, deliver your children. Lord, deliver your daughters. Deliver your sons. Lord, deliver, deliver, deliver. There is someone that the Lord will deliver this week, this month. Deliver me, Jesus. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground is because we want a miracle we are gathered because we love you 
Lift your two hands high to him this morning. Open your mouth and tell him something. Tell him something. You are the Lord that is your name. You will never share your glory with any man. You will never share your glory with anybody. Almighty God, that is your name. You are the Lord. Open your mouth and tell that the Lord is your name. My name is You will never share your glory with any man. You will never share your glory with any with anybody, Almighty God, that is your name. Adonai, I worship you, Son of God, you are so good. yourself struggling to worship God is a sign that there's no connect because when there is a connection between you and your maker to give him what is due him you don't struggle am I talking to someone you don't struggle you just you just you just it's an expression when a man and his wife are in good times for the words to flow you don't struggle 
to tell her I love you, I celebrate you, you are beautiful, you don't struggle. But when there is a problem, the words look very weighty. It's hard to come out. If you don't have a flow in worship, it's a sign that you are not still ready for eternity. Because one of the evidence I believe that you have a relationship with God, no guilt, is that there is worship. You say, I heard thy voice. God came in the cool of the day to fellowship with man. He said, I heard thy voice and I hid myself. What will make you hide yourself? What people run to, you are hiding yourself from. Why? Something. Lift your two hands and just. Your name is Yahweh. Jesus, you are the miracle walking God. Your name is Yahweh. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name. Hallelujah. Lift your voice, say, Father. Father, help me. Help me. To know you more this year. To know, know you more, more this year. year. Help me to know you more. Help, Help me to, to know, know you more. more. Help me to love you more. Help, Help me, me to, to love, love you more. more. Help me to obey you the more. Help, Help me, me to, to obey you more. more. Help me to celebrate you the more. Help me to celebrate you Help me to work for you the more. Help me to work for you the more. Help me to know you the more. Help me to know you Open your mouth and ask him. chapter 3 it says silver and gold have I not but such as I have lift your two hands and say Lord give me you Lord give me you give me you show me you show me you open me up to you open me up to you give me you give me you Lord give me you lift your two hands Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Give me you, Lord. Give me you. Everything has been wet. Everything has been wet. Give me you, Jesus. Give me you.
listen. 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 I don't know how many persons have ever heard God ask you a question. Lovest thou me more than this? Lovest thou me more than this? Is there something you are loving more than God? Is there something that is getting your attention more than God? In few minutes, you're going to talk to your God. Father, I love you more than gold. I love you more than silver. I love you more than wedding. I love you more than marriage. I love you more than children. Open your mouth and just talk to me.
to leave to what only you can do I'm satisfied just to see you glow come walk with me the road is rough and narrow Come walk with me, Jesus. I cannot walk alone. For the road is wrong. And there are many dangers. Come walk with me. And you will. Rough and narrow. Come walk with me. I cannot walk alone, Jesus. This road is rough, and there are many dangers. Come walk with me, and you. It's our year of preservation, but if God must preserve you, you must run into him. We need to run into him this year. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody. God said to Noah, build the hack. And then he said, hack them to come. Only those who entered were preserved. And he said, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. He said, the righteous does what? And they are what? Tell your neighbor, say, run into him. Run into him. Run into him this year. Run into him. Open your Bible quickly to the book of Romans chapter 7, verse 15. Good morning this morning. If you have your tithe, can you run to this altar quickly? Quickly, if you have your tithe. First service is a full service. I believe next time there will be nothing like they didn't do the hymn. Did they do him? Did they do Rema? Huh? First service is full service. Lift it up to heaven and speak to it. Huh? I cannot cry before you. And cry, and cry before, before no, no way. No way. And then about before another name. No way, no way, no way. Oh, I cannot bow before you, Lord. And bow before an ordinary man. No way, no way. I cannot tithe to you, Lord. And I pay hospital bills to a doctor. No way. You are my God. Lift it up to heaven. Father, do what only you can do and take all the glory. Bless them beyond human comprehension. Shock them. Surprise them. Honor them. Deliver them. Increase them. Multiply them. Amen. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Lay it on the altar. God bless you. God Thank bless you. God is able to do just, just what, what he, he says does. he will do. Don't give up on God because he will give up on you. He's able. If you have an outstanding vow and you are here, come. Quickly, quickly. Yeah. You have a vow. God is able to do. Man and able. Just what he said. Just lay it on the altar. Make sure your hand touches the altar. He's gonna fulfill every promise to you. Don't, Don't give, give up. up.
only have one word for you. The altar will speak for you. Amen. And the altar will fight for you. Amen. Are you in Romans chapter 7 verse 15? Makabaha. He said, for that which I do, I allow not. For that I would, that I do, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. Verse 16. Just run me through. He said, if then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that is good. Now then, it's no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Verse 18. For I know that in me that is my flesh dwelleth no good thing, for to will is present with me. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. I want to preach briefly this morning on a journey on provoking generational impact. I want to start by preaching on the enemy of generational impact. The enemy of generational impact. Hear me well, anything that carries positivity to a large extent has a negative dimension. And where there is the workings of God, there is the oppressions of the devil. So there is something, I came to talk to somebody and I took that test because I want you to understand that there is a battle between the flesh and the spirit. There is a battle. Paul said, I subdue my flesh daily. I subdue. You put this flesh under subjection. There are many things you desire to do that you battle to do. And the things you don't love to do, you don't struggle to do them. Anything that carries opposition carries promotion. Satan cannot oppose his will. But he will always oppose God's will. So any time you are struggling over something is a sign that that thing carries your next level. Let me say something to you. A man that has a cashew seed or a mango seed and decides to keep the seed. You can store the seed for four years. You can store it for ten years. Anytime somebody comes, you show them I have a cashew seed or a mango seed. But do you know you have a seed? But if you are able to plant the seed, you would have had a tree, had a fruit and still have many seeds. Am I talking to somebody? Why do you battle to pray? Why do you struggle with your tight? Why do you struggle with your purity life? Because Satan knows that that thing He said that things I love to do, I see myself unable. And those things I hate happen. I do them without struggle. Do I have a witness this first service? Yes, sir. I think there's some of you hearing the sound of my voice who are practically in this condition. One thing I love about Paul is that Paul was, was totally total. When I use the word was totally total, Paul was a balanced preacher. There is a point Paul will get, he will tell you, toss here the Lord. In another condition, he will say, toss here Paul. He will differentiate between when he is talking and when God is talking. And then in just several occasions, he will tell you how he feels. Like in this point, he said, I'm battling here. There's a battle I'm fighting. What is the battle? I don't like the things that happen to me cheaply. The things I want to do, I struggle with them. I came to talk to somebody. In case you are in this condition, number one is a sign that there is something about you. It's a sign that there is something about what you are about to do because Satan don't waste his investment on people who don't have a future Satan don't spend his time and resources on people who don't carry something have you ever asked yourself a question what will a king on the throne be doing with a baby born in the manger it's not about the baby it's not about the gender it's not about the age. It's about the destiny of the child. Am I 
talking to somebody. You are already a reigning king. What is your problem with a child? Do it with this. Take that child. Many years to develop. Many years to grow. Many years of formation. Maybe before the child gets to your age, you may have even left planet Earth. But it was not about the child. It is about what the child carry. When you see the devil on your case, it's a sign that you are somebody. Am I talking to someone here? I came to prophesy by the end of this encounter. The devil can abort God's agenda. I said the devil will not abort God's agenda of your life. If you believe it, shall thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. generational impact. A car can only be spoken of in your time. A house can be spoken of generations to come. There are legacies that speaks for generations. There are legacies. Every one of you must understand that you were created to make impact. Not just make impact. What's generational impact? Generational impact is the impact that stays, that lasts, transcends you. You are gone, the impact is still there. People are still talking of the days of the Azusa revival. We are still talking of the days of the Acts chapter 1 and Acts chapter 2. When the Bible, they keep referring us. Till tomorrow, Jesus said to the woman that brought the alabaster boss, she did something that provoked a generational matter. He said, wherever this gospel is preached, he said, your name will be mentioned. I don't know, 2,000 years ago, a woman did something. 2,000 years after, Reverend Fidelis is talking about the woman. Why? Because that's generational impact. Am I talking? Talking to someone here, I prophesy God will give you an idea that your fourth generation will live to inherit. God will give you a wisdom that your generation will benefit from. If you believe it, lift your left leg and shout fire here. This year, there is a betting. There is an idea that will come to be. That your children will look up to and they will be smiling. Say, God bless my father. God bless my mother. Am I talking to somebody here? But there is a problem. Men who don't fight this problem don't make impact or even if they make impact, their impact departs with them. Have you not seen men who reign and there's no continuity in their reign? You are not truly successful until you have a successor. I, I value David more than Solomon. In the school of impact and generational impact. Because David handed over the kingdom holistically to Solomon. Solomon handed it over dividedly. He broke it. Solomon didn't hand over the holistic temple. God said, I will divide this temple in the days of your children. I will break it. Why? Because of careless life. Careless life. Because the things he should do, he was battling to do at a time. And the things he should not do, he was enjoying doing them. When you start falling in love with the things you were supposed to hate, you know that your impact may depart with you. There are people who built a legacy and crumbled it before they walked away. I don't want to end like the president of a nation. I don't want to end like that. Am I talking to somebody? Yes, sir. I prophesy. Ah. Your word will hear you. Amen. Your children will enjoy your labor. Amen. Your children, children will benefit from it. Amen. If that amen is better, it will happen in a hurry. Amen. There is a man that once lived, I think he's 
dead, Rockefeller. Rockefeller. His grandchildren, they still share almost a million dollars for them every Christmas. The team know they go down. That's an impact. Generational impact. Am I speaking here? Yes, sir. I'm not talking of this mammoth work concept and idea that you are developing. Survivor mentality. Anything goes because you just want to survive. Am I talking to somebody? The Bible said there was a man of God that lived. When the man of God was there, the wife went to meet prophet and said, man of God, my husband was a man of God who served God, but he's dead. What did he leave as impact? He says, debt creditors are here to take his two children. He left a generational debt for his children to pay. People are living generational blessings. He left a generational debt. There are many of us because of parental carelessness. We are managing generational causes instead of generational blessings. Am I talking to somebody? Because of parental carelessness, we are managing generational causes instead of generational blessings. Because if the first Adam was conscious and careful, I would not need a Jesus to redeem me. Satan had a hold on us because our fathers handed us over. There was a plan for our life. God's agenda for our destiny from the beginning was authentic. But my father handed it over. Adam gave it to Satan that Jesus had to come and redeem man. Even in our redemption, there is still a battle not to be reduced. Am I talking to someone here? I came to church this morning to make you understand. Number one, live your life with consciousness of posterity. Don't pursue prosperity at the essence of posterity. You may not get prosperity, may not be generational in nature, but posterity is what generations will inherit. Am I talking to somebody? If you can hear me shout, I hear. I hear. Abraham blessings are mine. Do you know Abraham's mistake is still what we are managing today? If Abraham had not played the way match, I would not have to manage a case of Ishmael. Oh, somebody didn't hear what I'm saying. Yes, sir. Sleeping with house gear was what brought Ishmael to generational things. Abraham is dead! But the generations of Ishmael are still there. Yes, sir. Oh, somebody didn't hear what I'm saying. Yes. Be careful! Because when you do it, when men live for the future, they are careful about what they do in the present. You are not futuristic in nature. That's why you do what you do. Am I talking here? That's why you do what you do. Imagine a man died. Died in his summarized nature. After his death, the children regretted. Why were they regretting? He went to collect one chief tasty title that does not count. So the children were told they must kill how many cow? That they have to kill cow? Kill cow? They have to settle this junction? Settle this junction? Settle this junction? That's a generational pain. One very unreached. One very, let me not use the word that, but I still have some traditional men God is working on here. Am I speaking here? Another man's father died and it was peaceful. Very peaceful. Because nothing else. He lived for God and lived for his family. And so when he left, it was all about God. And you know with God, there's no pain. Anything we carry you a center's camp, pain they will. John 10, 10, go and read it with, don't rush it, settle down, be counting the words. The thief cometh. But to kill, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Then Jesus said, I have come that ye might have what? Have life. And have this life in what? Okay. Now, if you read John 10:10 10, 10, with a settled mentality, you will discover that there's nothing the devil gives you that is free. Because it's either he's stealing something or killing something or eventually will destroy something. 
Am I talking to somebody here? Yes, Imagine the thing where Bel I say they sweet you now, now I make you know they feel come out for public because you don't get Bel Air. But when you they do and the Bel say now you they rain. Am I talking to somebody else? Why are you scared? You are scared because there's something somewhere. The thing I love, I see myself. Are you in this condition that you are battling with the realities of your destiny? The devil is contending. It's because of what you carry. Church, can I say something to you? I don't just live the life I live because of... How will I use this word? I don't just live it because... I live it because... I don't just live it because of... I'm afraid of hell. I live it because I don't want to leave hell for my family. I don't want to leave hell. When I'm done fulfilling the numbers of my days and I've gone to be with the Lord, if Jesus tarry to tarry, there is something I want to live for. I want to live that my children will look at me and they will say, God bless my father. I heard the story of a pastor who, 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 who went to be with the Lord and on the day of his funeral, people were coming, church people will come and talk about wonderful pastor. Another one will come about wonderful missionary. Everybody they kept talking and the children tapped their mother. Who are they talking about? And he said they are talking about your father. The good pastor. The good this and that. But he was a bad husband. He was a bad father. Am I speaking to somebody here? Every one of you must understand that there is a generation that is waiting to call the result. It may not just be when we get to heaven. It may just be the next generation. Am I talking to somebody here? Somebody shout I hear. Wait now. What did they call Jesus? At the time. The son of who? No, talk to me now. Son of? What did they call Saul? Is that not Saul? The son of who? Kish. We then look at your children and they say they call the son of the Ashawo. Or they'll say the son of that thief. Am I speaking to somebody? Can't you see why you must live with a, a generational mentality in mind? Live with a generational mentality. Am I talking here this morning? Live with it. My father may not have given me the monies, all the money in life, but he gave me something. The Bible says a good name is better than riches. There is no way I've ever mentioned my father's name and he does not carry applaud. No one who has ever met my father has spoken heal of him. If you blame your father, make sure your children don't blame you. My father not try. If to say my papa try, my life would not have been like this. May your children not say what you are saying. Am I talking to us? Now who, what is the enemy of generational impact? The enemy of generational impact is don't. The don't that you don't. Or the don't that you do. The don't that you what? You do. Don't. Don't. One of the greatest enemy of generational impact is what? Don't. Somebody say don't. Say it like you mean it. Say don't. What are the don't? What are the don't in your life? What are the don't in your life? Because when Satan comes... Satan does not look for the do, he looks for the don't. Satan will not tempt you with the doings, he tempts you with the don't. Satan will not come to your life trying to celebrate the things you do. He looks for the things you were asked not to do. And then he wants to coax you to do those things. Because when you do the things you were asked not to do, that's how you miss out or you depart with your impact. And it does not become generational impact. The things I love, I can't. But the things I hate, I do. Don't. As God 
God, what is it that God told you not to do? If you read your Bible very well, Genesis chapter 2, verse 16 and 17. Genesis chapter 2. Tell your neighbor, say, I will not. I will not. Can you preach with your face mask on? Say, don't. Just tell the person by your side, say, don't. I can't hear you. Somebody shout, don't. I can't hear you. Somebody shout, don't. Do you want to make generational impact? Somebody say, don't. don't. Do you want to be celebrated and the celebration will become the benefit of your children, children? Somebody shout, don't. I'm not talking to somebody here. The enemy of generational impact are the things that God has told you not to do. If you dare it, you miss God. God don't gamble it. There is something God cannot tolerate is disobedience. He can't take it. There are three things that irritates God. He tattoo. One of them is rebellion. Rebellion. Because it has happened before his very eye. Satan rebel. Number two is evil speakers. Accuser of the brethren. God hates it. Satan accused God before two third angels. And they, what did they end up doing? They rebelled in heaven. They rebelled. Somebody said, don't. He said, and the Lord God commanded the man, saying, of every tree of the garden, thou mayest freely eat. He said, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. What does it mean? Don't don't for in the day that thou eatest therefore thou shalt surely that means your impact will be eroded eroded the day thou eatest of it thy impact shall be what wiped we only refer to Adam when we want to talk of our pain not our gain the first Adam how can you take delivery of such a beautiful destiny and then at the end you messed it up? I don't know if I'm saying something. Yes, sir. Many times if I talk about the first Adam, I'm talking about the one through which affliction came. Say by one man some righteousness sin came. By another one man righteousness. What happened? Redemption came. So when we're talking about Adam, we are not talking about generational impact. We are talking about generational pain. I might speak it to somebody because he could not keep to what? The deed, the, the bargain. He could not hold on to the deed of assignment. God said to him, the laws of engagement. He said, don't, don't, don't. That was all Adam need to keep enjoying life. He said, of every other tree thou shalt eat, take it for food. How can God give you everything? God gives you everything and yet Satan wants you to eat the one God says you should not eat. He said, don't. Don't touch it. Don't eat it. Don't think it. Don't contemplate it. It's not a bargain. Am I talking here? It's not a negotiation. It's not a prayer point. Somebody was talking to me about something. I said, forget it. Once has he spoken, twice have I heard. Once has he spoken, twice have I heard. I no longer struggle to do the things I do because I have been persuaded and convinced that God is not a man to lie, is not a deceiver, is a rewarder of day that diligently seek him. Listen, when God becomes your paymaster, it they pay yaga yaga. And how can God be my paymaster? If God can love you, God can help you. He said, He saw have I hated Jacob, have I loved. And how can I get God to love me? If God must love you, then you must obey him. God is attracted to a people who take delight in obeying him. He's attracted to a people who takes pleasure in giving him all the glory. Where he takes glory, he delights to go. Where he's obeyed, he loves to go there. When you have two children and every time you send one message, it ends in problem. Another one gives you perfect result. Who will you keep calling? Answer me fast. He said, 
eat of every tree, eat of every other thing is for food. But he said, But for this tree, thou shalt not eat. When Satan came, where did Satan take him to? Talk to me now. He didn't take him to the place where God said, Enjoy. Satan took him to the very tree where God said, Don't. As soon as he ate that tree, Katina, his impact on earth was what? Eroded. That's when we began to have childbirth, labor in childbirth. Eh? Because that was when man, the woman was cursed. That's when God spoke to the woman. And that led to some of the pains that you go through when you're giving birth to a child. That was when God caused the head for man's sake. Originally, man was not struggling to eat because everything was available. You just wake up, it's available. But when man fell, that's when toiling came, tears came, many things entered into our world. Even if redemption came, the things still not be like it used to be. Because right now, you need to use the name of the Lord to enjoy what you must enjoy. But at that time, you just enjoy it because it was all provided. That's why he said, and from the beginning. Adam missed it and lost it. Genesis chapter 1, God gave him a job. God created a, a company. In Genesis chapter 2, he gave man a job. Created man and gave him a job in Genesis chapter 3, God fired man. Fired him. Bible said they pursued man out of the garden. And angels that were supposed to serve man were the ones who stood at the gate of the garden with two swords. So you cannot enter here again. What have you missed? Because you you take delight in doing the don't. What I hate, I do. What I love to do, I cannot do. And I might speak it to somebody. Yes, and he said, this is the workings of the flesh. It is the operations of the law. And when you walk in the flesh, you please Satan. When you walk in the spirit, you do what? You please God. Because he that cometh to him must first believe. And you must understand that as many that are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Every one of you must understand. You can't walk in the spirit and be rebellious. You can't walk in the spirit and be disobedient. Any man who walks in rebellion is full of the flesh. It is the flesh that looks for good. The spirit looks for scriptures. It is the flesh that looks for fornication and adultery. The spirit looks for scriptures. When a man is in the spirit, it pursues you to the place of prayers, pursues you to the place of study. But when you begin to discover that you begin to pursue flesh, any KB way pass, you get problem. You know that your flesh is thicker than your spirit. He said, for my spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Another one. First Samuel chapter 15 verse 22. And Samuel said, remember when God spoke to Saul. He said, where you go? You will outright, utterly destroy the armor like. And he took some of the spoils. And when Samuel came, God did not spare Saul. Are you aware, if not for the benevolence of David, the generation of Saul, who would have continued in kingship, went to the village called Lodiba. Will your children start in the palace and end in Lodiba? Because you, you did the don't that God said you should not do. Am I talking to somebody? Yes, sir. Because as it were, the what made Saul to enter kingship is what made his generation kings for life. The moment the father conquered it, Jonathan was supposed to be the next. But somehow, the heroes of, of, of Saul took the, the mantle out of his generation and he went from Saul to David. Tell him, said, don't. The implications are stronger than And Samuel said, Had the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifice as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to act in than the fat of rams. This scripture, this scripture is one of my checks in life and destiny. And Saul said to him, When thou, I mean, Samuel said to Saul, So when thou art little in thy own eyes, did the Lord not pick you? And made you a king 
in Israel. Over his people. When you were little in your own eyes. May I not grow to a point where I become big in my own eyes. May I not grow to a point when the size of my bank account becomes the determinant factor for my love, my worship, my commitment, my service, and my followership. May I not get to a point when the size of my garage will not determine my prayer time and prayer hour. Am I talking to somebody here? Yeah. And he said, when thou art little in thy own eyes, when thou, you know what he told him? What was told him? Fight, but don't. What did he do? He went for what? The don't. And what happened to him? Lost it. Do you know his generation? They had to go and help one of them. From where? Lodiba. 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 Please, can somebody tell me, when we speak about Elijah, we talk about Elisha. Is it true? When we speak about David, we can talk about Solomon. Please, when we talk about Solomon, who can we point? Talk to me now. Who can we point? That was the man who had an encounter with God and became the wisest man. He was wettiest and wisest. But about say he went after strange gods. Strange women led him to strange gods. Now what club that the pass enter dance? He met strange women. Strange women took him to strange gods. I know God is a jealous God. My glory will I not share with another. So he began to share God's glory with strange gods. What is Solomon's legacy in terms of generational continuity? Imagine! Naomi lost everything. But still mentored a root. A root. May God give you people who will not love you for vanity's sake. Amen. Who will love you for you's sake. Amen. And now be sad. My her womb is empty. I can no longer bring forth sons. Even if I bet sons, can you be able to wait for them to grow for you to marry them? He said, I have no longer sons to present. And Oprah kissed her goodbye. But now Ruth said, Where else shall I go? Your God, my God, your people, my people. For where thou goest, I go. You can't submit to serve and not be saved in life. And Naomi said to Ruth, he said, this is Boaz. When you go, stay by this side. Take this position. Don't just do cat walk. Take this position. And when Naomi went, Naomi took a position as instructed. I mean, root. When Boaz woke up, the boy no feel whole body. He said, wait till be this one. Are you aware that the genetic connection of Jesus is connected to Boaz? To Boaz. Number three. Have you read the story of Samson? Samson loved what he was hard to kill. God said, you shall deliver the children of Israel from the Philistines. He started loving the Philistines. What is Samson's generational impact? What can you trace to Samson now? Talk to me, Delilah. The plucky eye. Eh? Plucky eye. Delilah. The first time he went for a Philistine wo uh, woman, his best man took it from him. He didn't know that something was telling him, take it easy this way. He didn't listen to his parents. The same Philistine connection made him pull gate. That was where he ended his destiny. Why? The things he was supposed to fight were the things he began to love. I came to talk to somebody. Fight the don'ts. Uphold the principles. Refuse to bow to the pressure of Satan. To do the don'ts of your life because it is dangerous and it has a tendency to terminate your impact, which can never culminate into generational impact. Make up your mind, make up your mind. And God said, Listen to me, there is no future for a sinner, no future for righteousness. There is no future, a man of iniquity has no future. I speak without missing words. Lift up your right hand where you are seated. Say, Father, Father, Father. deliver me.
deliver Amen. from the thing that destroys generational impact. Lord, deliver me Lord, deliver from, me from the thing that destroys generational impact. Open your mouth and pray it one minute. <laughs> Lord, deliver me, deliver me. The church is you. You are the church. No church without you. Omega Fire Ministries Lagos, the wealthy place, recognizes you in the church because you are the church we're looking forward to be with. Come worship with us at Plot 2 Stroke 3, Kudirat Abiola Way by First Bank Bus Stop, Oregu, Ikeja, Lagos. We, the church, needs you. Because you matter. Welcome to church. To church.